Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to everybody in our audience today. We have a fantastic Facebook Live lined up for you. So excited about this one. Changing things up a bit. It's going to be a really interesting session. And we're so excited to have you all in the audience. So if you're tuning in, please let us know where you're joining us from. I'm sure our guest is just going to be floored by the international audience that we have here joining us. Um, let's see. I see Caroline from Sweden and uh, Kitty from Washington State, uh, Victor from Ontario, Canada. So thank you all for tuning in today and for letting us know where you're joining us from. Uh, what's the weather like where you are? Is it getting cold um, or are you on the other side of the world? We'd love to hear. So uh, let us know in the comments. We love hearing from everyone in our audience. Uh, we're so excited about today's session. We have with us best-selling author AJ Jacobs, and he'll join us soon. Before we get to today's session, I'm going to let you know um, about a sale that we have going on at My Heritage. We have started our Black Friday sales early here at My Heritage. So my Heritage DNA kits are on sale, 40% off regular price. Uh, very exciting for anyone who is starting their holiday shopping. So we'll be putting a link in the comments section and make sure to check it out. I pick up a DNA kit, a my Heritage DNA test for people on your list. Um, and I'm sure you'll uh, hear more today about the um, you know, how, how interesting it can be when you explore more about your family history, whether it be by DNA or other types of family history research. Uh, in addition, we will also have a giveaway for today's show. So we'll be giving away a MyHeritage DNA kit today at the end of today's session to one lucky winner. Um, and of course, if you've yourself already taken a DNA kit, uh, which we hope everyone here has, <laughs> you can then take that DNA kit and use it for a friend, a family member. So we hope that you can all enter our draw for today. And uh, to do so, let us know in the comments section uh, which cousins you'd like to find in your family, what you're looking for in your family history. What is that mystery? Uh, what is that brick wall? What is the, you know, the family rumor that you've always heard about um, that you'd like to explore further, find out about? We'd love to hear about it. So leave us a comment in the comment section and let us know uh, what that story that you'd like to explore further and get answers for is. And uh, we hope to be giving out that DNA kit at the end of today's session to one lucky winner. So really looking forward to that today, a great prize. And of course, if you don't win, you can always take a look at our amazing Black Friday DNA sale prize, our early black, black Black Friday sale, and um, that's 40% off DNA kits. So we'll put a link in the comments section. So now, of course, I would like to introduce our amazing guest that we have today. We have with us AJ Jacobs. He's an American journalist, author, and lecturer. He's best known for writing about his lifestyle experiments, which are just, uh, you know, so amazingly entertaining and hilarious. Uh, I know that I love his books. Uh, he's an editor at large for Esquire and has worked, um, you know, has worked for so many different uh, publications, and we're just so thrilled to have him with us today. So let me bring him onto the screen here. Hello, AJ. Hello, Esther. What a Thank delight. You. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're so thrilled that you could be here. Oh, my pleasure. And Esther, you're awesome. You are one of my favorite cousins. We'll talk about how we're <laughs> cousins later, but you and I are, are indeed distant cousins. So. Indeed. Uh, <laughs> as is everyone out there so thank you all cousins from sweden from arizona thank you all for coming i'm very excited i'm going to talk for about 25 20 minutes 25 minutes and then open it up to any questions uh and i'm gonna do a little uh screen sharing so you get to see some pictures Perfect. Um, and uh so are we ready, Esther, or is there sure. more? Sure, yeah, you can you can press uh, the screen button and we'll get your your slides up. And, and of course, um, throughout, I just want to tell everyone in our audience, uh, feel free to leave questions for AJ throughout uh, the session in the comment section, and we hope to take a lot of those at the end. And of course, any comment that you have, we love, we love reading those comments. So feel free to 
to chat with us in those comments. And uh, here, let me just get your slides up, AJ. Okay. One minute. Is that it? I think they're up, no? Yep, perfect. I'll okay, just... terrific. Yeah, great, we're all set. Love it. Well, thank you again for coming. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you. Uh, as Esther mentioned, I am a writer. I, I'm coming to you here in New York City. Uh, and uh, I'm going to talk mostly about the book I wrote on family history. Uh, but just to give you a very quick background, uh, as Esther mentioned, I love to dive into my topics, really almost become a human guinea pig. So uh, one of the uh, books I wrote many years ago was called The Year of Living Biblically. And uh, for that one, I tried to follow all the rules of the Bible as literally as possible. So I had uh, the Ten Commandments. I tried to love my neighbor. I tried not to covet and lie and gossip. And I, I'm a journalist and live in New York City, so you can imagine how hard that was. But uh, I also tried to follow the less famous rules. The Bible says you cannot shave the corners of your beard. I didn't know where the corners were. So as you can see, I had quite some topiary on my chin. Uh, and there I was in, in Times Square. I didn't actually have the sheep with me at all times. That was just a sort of a, uh, uh, a rental sheep for the cover shoot. Uh, my most recent book, one of the big lessons of that actually was gratitude. And I took that uh, from my most recent book which was called uh, Thanks a Thousand, which I can hold up here if you can see. And that one, what I did was I tried, I traveled around the world and tried to thank a thousand people who had anything to do with my morning cup of coffee. Uh, so I went to South America and I, I, I uh, thanked the barista here in New York and I went to South America and thanked the farmers. But I also thanked the unbelievable number of people who it took to make this happen. So the people who pay, who drove the truck for the coffee beans, the people who who paved the road so the truck would have some place to drive. And it was it was really um, about interconnection and how many thousands of people we take for granted in our lives, or at least I did. Uh, and actually connection is the big theme of my my uh, family history book. So let me, let me turn to that. Um, what happened, this book had actually an odd beginning. It had, it began when a, um, I got an email a few years ago from a man and he said, I don't know you, but I've read your books and you are my 12th cousin. So I fell, you know, okay, here comes the, uh, the next email where he asks me to to wire $10,000 to his Nigerian bank. But that actually never came. It turns out he's a dairy farmer who lives on a kibbutz in Israel. And he is uh, part of a group of researchers and scientists who are working to build a massive family tree. And, and his family tree, actually, the one that I'm on, has 22,000 people. Uh, so I would love to see in the comments, uh, and I'll read them after about people, uh, who, how many they have on their family tree. Um, so I have mixed feelings about this because, you know, do I really want that many new relatives? I already have some relatives on my tree who maybe I don't uh, want on my tree, you know, like, like my cousin who lives in Las Vegas and hired a uh, stripper dressed as a leprechaun to crash his own wedding. So do I want more? Actually, he's a, he's a lovely guy, despite that. Uh, but another part of me was, um, was, was much less cynical. I, it was, I was blown away because I said to myself, this is what we've always been taught, that we're one big family. And here is concrete proof that we are all related. And I said, okay, this has to be the, the topic of my next book, Family History, because we are living in the golden age of family history. It is really remarkable. There are three revolutions that happened at the same time to blow this up. So there was the DNA revolution, the internet revolution, and the archives revolution. So the DNA revolution, of course, you can swab your cheek and, and find out your heritage and, and find hundreds of cousins you didn't know you were related to. Uh, the internet revolution is, of course, being able to communicate with these people 
Uh, and I'm going to talk a bit about Genie, which is a, a Wikipedia-like approach to genealogy, and it's a, it's actually owned by my heritage. Uh, and then the third revolution was the information revolution, where you just have access to old newspapers and uh, and and census records like never before. So it is an amazing time for family research. So the book uh, was basically in three parts. So I'll tell you each of those. One part was an exploration of my own immediate family. And I did get lucky, I feel, but maybe everyone's lucky if I, I had fascinating ancestors. And I think we all do if, if we're able to access them. Uh, so there was a, a, a peacock salesman I found, uh, suffragists. Uh, I spent a lot of time researching my mom's dad, my maternal grandpa, who died a few years ago, but he was a fascinating man. His name was Ted Keel. And he, there he is with his wife, my grandmother, Anne. And he was a larger than life character. He was a lawyer. He lived in New York City. He wore the loudest clothes you can imagine. Like to my wedding, he wore a red and white checkered suit. It looked like an Italian restaurant tablecloth. I, I learned a lot about him actually from a great source, his FBI file. I got the Freedom of Information Act and I got hundreds of pages on his FBI file. Uh, he wasn't a gangster. It actually, he had an FBI file for the best reason. He was very involved in civil rights. He was actually Martin Luther King's lawyer for one of the lawsuits against the Alabama police. Uh, and he threw fundraisers Oh yeah, so there is a, and there is an example of something from my FBI file. You can hear I'm in New York from the honking, uh, so hope that makes you feel at home. Uh, and here is a from one of the fundraisers at their house that they gave for Martin Luther King. So uh, my grandfather, it was wonderful to read about him. I also learned about I had known a little about it, but I learned about a program that he was involved in that brought students from Africa to the United States to study. And one of those students was Barack Obama Sr. Uh, and my grandfather he died a few years ago, but he did live long enough to see Obama elected. And he was very thrilled. Uh, I was proud about what I learned about my grandfather, but of course, not all ancestors are so virtuous, which is good because a lot of times the most fun ancestors are the the ne'er-do-wells, the scamps, uh, and we all have them. Uh, in fact, what's great about genealogy is there is a specialist for everything. So I found a man named Ron Ahrens, who has a company called Black Sheep Research, and he will research your family tree and find all the terrible people in it for you, the murderers, the gangsters. Uh, he's a great character. He goes to the conventions, genealogy conventions in like a prison outfit with black and white stripes. Uh, he did find, among others, a, um, a great uncle of mine who was very involved in the uh, teapot dome scandal, which I had uh, forgotten about from when I learned it in high school, but it was a big bribery and corruption scandal that brought down Warren G. Harding. So that's my family. Uh, I also had an ancestor one one of the big challenges, of course, is if you cannot find any archives on your ancestors. So there was one ancestor named Solomon Kingsbacher, and he was a challenge. I could not find any mention of him in the census, in any records. I finally found one mention. It was in a newspaper. It wasn't even an article. It was an advertisement. And he was quoted as saying that this product was very uh, successful for him. And the, the product was uh, a hemorrhoid cream. So uh, that it is, is his legacy, which is kind of heartbreaking. <laughs> and I feel uh, my heart goes out to him. I'm sure he had a fascinating life and uh, lots of nuances, but uh, there he is. And luckily, I think in the future, we all have, for better or worse, we all have lots of more on the internet that our descendants can find out about it, as I say, for better or worse. Um, uh, and as I, I'll take that off so you can, don't have to look at that. But the, um, 
the good part I think about learning about the ups and downs of your family history is that that is an incredibly important lesson for us and for our kids. Uh, there's a study, probably the most famous study in family history. It's an Emory University study, and it found that kids who know about their family history are happier than kids who don't. And the reason, or at least the hypothesis, is that the key is telling them the uncensored version. So the oscill what he calls, the researcher calls the oscillating narrative, the ups and downs. We need to tell our... Uh, our kids and grandkids say, look, you know, our family, we've had some successes, but we've also had some failures. We've gone bankrupt, our houses have burned down, but we have persevered. We have weathered the storms. Uh, so it's really an important lesson in grit. Uh, okay, so the, the second of the three parts of the book was an exploration of the DNA revolution, which... Um, uh, as Esther said, you can take a DNA test from my heritage, and uh, it was I took I took uh, D, my heritage's DNA test. Uh, I found out that I was Jewish, which was not a huge shock. Um, but one thing that was an interesting surprise, you know, they send you a uh, a list of all of your cousins who are who who share enough DNA that they can qualify as cousins, and. Uh, you know, there were a few hundred on that list, but one of them was Julie Jacobs, which is the name I recognized because that's my wife. So I learned that I was cousins with my wife. Uh, you know, not first or second, uh, more like fifth or sixth. I thought it was a kind of a cool fact, uh, but my wife was freaked out. So she said, please don't mention it again. So that's why she's not watching today's uh, presentation. Uh, it, it is fascinating, this DNA revolution, that, and I explore it in the book um, because, you know, it has it has many wonderful parts, but it's also got some risky parts. You might learn about relatives you didn't know you had and didn't know and didn't want. Uh, I, I didn't have any surprise siblings, or, but, uh, but I interviewed many people who did. I, I interviewed one man who... Uh, who after his father died, they tested his DNA. They got a little bit of hair and they tested it. And this man had nine siblings, nine brothers and sisters. And it turns out that the man they thought was their father was the biological father of none of those nine siblings. It was like Maury Povich for those who live in America, Maury Povich to the nth degree. Um, and in fact, there were eight different biological dads for the nine different siblings. Now, the good part of the story is that the dad, it turned out he knew these kids were not his biological kids, but he still treated them with love. He still treated them like a father. And I think that's such an important lesson that family is more than DNA. Um, so uh, there was another great story I, I included in my book about um, two women who were uh, born in Korea, but they were both adopted into American families. And on Facebook, they were both on Facebook and then they had a mutual acquaintance. They didn't know each other and they were in different American families. And the acquaintance said, you guys look eerily similar. So they saw and they said, yes, we do. And they they took the test and it turns out they, they were identical twins, separated at birth. Uh, they tried to contact their biological mom in Korea. Unfortunately, she didn't want to, want to be contacted. But to me, the wonderful part of the story, the upside is, uh, when I when I interviewed one of the siblings, she said that she feels she has a multitude of mothers. She's she has her adoptive mother, who she thinks is is a, um, uh, thinks of as her mother, her twins' adoptive mother. She's an actress and she, she has a manager who she calls a momager because she's so close. So I love this idea that, that family, again, does not have to just be DNA. It can be much bigger than that. And um, for me, the more support, the better. Um, 
All right, the third and final part of the adventure, and then I'll open it up to questions, was the, um, oh wait, I had a picture of the, uh, there are the twins. Uh, the third and final part is uh, what was called the world family tree. Uh, because, uh, you know, I had a 20, my friend from uh, Israel had a 22,000 on this tree, which seemed big, but it's actually not compared to what's out there. Uh, there's this service called Genie. I don't know how, uh, how many of you are on it, but it's uh, affiliated with my heritage. And, and it's like, almost like, um, a Wikipedia model. So you can put up your family tree and see if it overlaps with anyone else's family tree. And if you feel confident it does, you can combine your family trees. So you just keep combining and there is something called the world family tree that has not thousands, not tens of thousands. It has right at, this was last night, there was 161 million people all connected on the same family tree. And it is just an astounding, uh, to me, the upside is that I hope we get to 7 billion and see that we're all related and that, that might this, this might reduce tribalism, might remind us that there is, that we are a family. We are the human family. Uh, so I spent a long time on this uh, world family tree. I mean, probably too long figuring out who I was related to. Uh, so, you know, because you can, it will calculate how you're related to people by blood or by, um, by marriage. So for instance, here is, oh wait, sorry, no, there it is there. Here's my cousin, Barack Obama. He is my, um, my aunt's fifth grade aunt's husband's father's wife's seventh grade nephew. So we are very close. Uh, but I love this six degrees of Kevin Bacon for family. Um, and it was actually a wonderful way to network because I would call people up and say, hey, you know, this may sound weird, uh, but I'm your, I'm your cousin, or, you know, distant cousin. And, and you're going to get quite a few who say, please never contact me again. But you sometimes... Uh, a surprising number of times you say, oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah, well, you know, let's meet. So I got to meet my cousins, uh, John Legend, and that's uh, Olivia Munn, and um, oh, I can't remember his name, the comedian, Ricky Gervais. Uh, sorry, cousin. Uh, I'm, I am, uh, you know, I live in New York, uh, so I am a Democrat, but I am a big fan of uh, uh, the elder Bush. I thought uh, he did some uh, amazing things. So I got to meet him. Uh, and and the hope again is to remind people with this big family tree that we are all one big family and um, we share 99.5% of our DNA. Uh, and there is some evidence that reminding people that they're part of the same family makes them treat each other with more kindness. You know, I have three sons and I've seen how they treat each other. So I know it's not foolproof, but there was a fascinating study by, um, by Harvard just a few years ago that showed when they had, they took Israelis and Palestinians and when they, they showed one group how they were related and that group treated each other with more, more kindness and tolerance than the group that was not told. So uh, to stress this point, uh, I decided to end my book and end my journey with what I call the global family reunion, which was this idea that I would, since I have 7 billion cousins, why not all invite them to a party? Uh, so I threw a party in New York City. Um, not all 7 billion came, uh, but we did get about 10,000 people. We had 4,000 in New York and we had 6,000 in simultaneous reunions around the world in New Zealand, in India. One of the main sponsors was My Heritage. Thank you, My Heritage. Um, it, was, uh, it was a very strange party it, because you had this crazy quilt of human beings. You had um, one of the talks was from a, a rabbi and um, a minister and an imam all on stage 
sounds like a, a joke walking to a bar, but it was real. We had um, Henry Louis Gates gave a, a lovely talk. We even had Sister Sledge come and sing, We Are Family. Uh, and uh, all my cousins and me, we changed the lyrics. So it was, uh, it was a wonderful event. Uh, honestly, not for me. I was miserable because I was so stressed out because uh, I had never thrown an event for 4,000 people. So I was uh, obsessing over every little thing. Uh, but other people say they had a lovely time and that they would I, I loved watching people just greet each other and say, hey, cousin, hey, cousin, even if they didn't know each other. And uh, so that is, uh, I think, uh, the theme was connections, and uh, which is important to remember in these divisive times. So I will say it again. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to end now, but open it up for questions. But I just want to thank all of you cousins for coming and of course you are all invited to Thanksgiving at my house so I'll see you in a few days all right I'm gonna stop sharing okay oh let's just put it like that <laughs> thank you AJ so um so we're all gonna show up for turkey in a few days <laughs> yeah we'll see you then exactly amazing um, I want to know if you've done another uh, family reunion since then maybe on a smaller scale <laughs> I have, yes, much smaller. I've had family reunions of 20, 25 people. I'd be interested, what is the biggest family reunion uh, other people have been to out there? And uh, uh, oh, That's a good question. So everyone write in in the audience and uh, let us know, let us know what the largest family reunion that you've held um, is. I'm sure, I, I, I'm not sure if anyone will be able to top 4,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> well, weirdly, it was not the biggest. There was one in France that was 5,000. Wow. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't get that that world record, but I was certainly, it was bigger than, um, with the 10,000, it was the biggest simultaneously. Oh, I was there in New York for this cousin. Thank you, cousin Steve James Hall. That is lovely to hear. Um, yeah, that's so nice that he was there in the audience. And I see Adriana wrote and said, um, another proud New Yorker here who loves your message of unity. Thank you, cousin Adriana. And and Todd says uh, we have a reunion every four years with about 400 attending. That's huge. That is not easy to pull off. Uh, I, I did have about 10 years ago. I'll just tell it quickly because I want to hear other people's reunion stories. But I did have we had, uh, it was my mater my paternal grandma is named Flug, uh, and we had the Flugathon is what it was called. And we had about 50 people. The, the biggest memory I have is that my, my dad and my sister organized it, and we held it at a Chinese restaurant in Chinatown, and they went down together to make reservations. And somehow, through the language barrier, the manager of the restaurant assumed that they were getting married. So we all got to the reunion and it was, uh, it had a big banner saying, congratulations, <laughs> the happy couple with my dad's and sister's name. So we, we enjoyed that, but that, that not, was not true. That is not true. The biggest re reunion was dozens in Oklahoma. Uh, so that yeah that's big i mean it's hard to get a lot of people did anyone try a virtual family reunion during the uh oh that's a great question yeah i'm sure we definitely did family zoom calls but i don't think we didn't attempt more than i would say 10 people but maybe people here did a did a larger one that would be interesting to hear as well and if and and that if you're able to kind of record the whole thing you have that you know as a family memory for years to come and Adriana, wow, you have 52 years straight of reunions. That is insane uh, and lovely. <laughs> so, uh, that, that's amazing. I mean, I love family reunions because it is, uh, you know, these people. That was another thing I think that this, this taught me was since everyone's your cousin, uh, it also means everyone is a potential friend. 
So sometimes when I was younger, I used to view my cousins as like, ah, oh, you know, it's just an obligation. But no, a lot of these people are fascinating and wonderful. So almost switching the lens between friend and cousin, I find is, is lovely. Oh, so we got a lot more messages. We have uh, Connie, sadly, I have I never attended a family reunion uh, scattered because uh, so many lost in the Holocaust. Yeah, that was that is a common. I certainly I see, have. I see a question here from Katie, and and maybe you could tell her as someone who started just you know started your whole family history journey at a certain point. But she said, "I have little to no information on my family. How would you start your research? So where did you start, AJ? What was your first you know your first point of contact after that cousin contacting you?" Yes, well, I would recommend joining a service. I mean, we're off my heritage, which is a great service. So there are others, but my heritage, I recommend. Uh, and and then uh, the next is, uh, yes, trying the DNA test because they will send you a list of cousins, which is fascinating. Google is a very powerful tool. Uh, so don't underestimate Google. If you uh, can afford it, I recommend newspapers.com uh, because these small newspapers are uh, amazing because you know they covered the most mundane small details of people's lives. But it's fascinating because you get to you get a real taste of your ancestors. So one I remember, I had one, uh, it was, I think, like a second grade aunt who had a wedding in St. Louis and in like, uh, you know, the early 1900s. And the newspaper covered the wedding. Wow. Not only did they cover it, they like wrote about what she wore. Uh, they wrote about, this was crazy. They wrote about the presents, the gifts <laughs> that everyone gave them, including the estimated price so like <laughs> how much people spent wow that is rude but uh <laughs> but it is fascinating so i i recommend if you can get some names of ancestors um and then yeah of course just interviewing uh if you have any living relatives i i i really recommend one of my most favorite experiences was just sitting down with a tape recorder and interviewing my mom and my dad, not just to ask for names, which I did, but also their stories. And there's some great lists online. If you Google something like, you know, questions for uh, answer, questions for family members, there's like lists where you can get like 200 lists, 200 items, uh, and they're really helpful uh, to prompt the memory, like, you know, what was, what was uh, a birthday party, you remember, you know, there are, there are dozens of them, but they are, they're just wonderful. So, so helpful. Yeah. Wow. Uh, oh, hello, AJ from Doug and Linda Harding, who headed up the Global Family Reunion in New Zealand. It was a wonderful event. Thank you, cousins. <laughs> I, I loved it. I dropped, you heard me, I dropped the name New Zealand because it sounds so far away and it is. So uh, thank you for that. That is, I, 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 had, uh, I have pictures of the New Zealand reunion on my, uh, on my computer. Oh, really? He's going to show up at your door next week for Thanksgiving. <laughs> I will be honored. I will see you there, Doug and Linda. Uh, <laughs> Okay, let's see what it, the only, um, I got a question about native DNA haplogroup zero. Okay, I, that is uh, over my head, uh, but. So uh, we can say that um, just to tell everyone in the audience, just in case you don't know, we've had hundreds, we are now um, over 150 of these Facebook lives on our English Facebook page over the past um, year and a bit. And there are so many different sessions uh, for those of you starting off or who need more information about DNA, um, about genetic genealogy, about family history in general, about, uh, we had a session actually AJ just this week about, um, you know, prompts for dragging information out of family members, which is what you were just talking about. Um, so they're all available for anyone who wants to go back on the My Heritage Facebook page under the videos section. So make sure um, you can all check those out and if they're great resources to answer 
um, to answer those questions. So, and I see Connie wrote, um, how can one go about creating a family reunion, a virtual one? Any tips there, oh. AJ? Well, someone recommended House Party app, which I have never used, but I did use a fascinating app, uh, not for a family reunion, but for a party, and it's called Gather Town. So if you Google Gather Town, and it is, I loved the experience. Uh, I mean, you could always do Zoom uh, and break into, if you have too many people break into rooms, but uh, Gather Town actually tries to simulate an actual party. So oh. you have an overhead view of like a, a house with different rooms and you have a little avatar and you can move your avatar around. And when you get close to someone else's avatar, then their video pops up like Zoom and you can have a conversation and a few people can join. The other suggestion I have for, um, uh, the other suggestion is, is activities. I do think that brings people together. Uh, so uh, we play uh, games like, you know, Fictionary, where you have a, you have to make up a fake definition of a, a strange word and guess whose is right. Uh, my wife, I'm just going to put in a plug because why not? My wife has a company called Watson Adventures and they do online scavenger hunts. Oh, wow. Uh, which they've had tons of uh, corporations, but also families, you know, they, they it, and, and I do think you don't want that to be the whole reunion, but you do that and then people feel a lot more relaxed and are. Right. Know, it's a great bonding experience. Exactly. Amazing. Um, I see. We'll just take this last one and then, uh, and then we'll do our giveaway of a DNA kit for one lucky winner. Um, so um, this user asks, how do I find information on a family member who is a complete mystery? So did you have any of those in your research, AJ? Somebody who just, you know, that elusive ancestor you heard rumors about, but you just didn't know anything about? Oh yeah. Well, I think the key is there's no one method. You wanna try every strategy you can. So you wanna try DNA, you wanna look in all of the traditional uh, uh, census, uh, but you also want to look in the newspapers. You want to, uh, you know, you can go, there are experts. I don't know if you are have the budget to hire someone, but they can be amazing. If you don't, then uh, you can go to your local uh, LDS. Is that it? Yeah, Latter-day Saints, uh, because they, you know, that's part of their religion is to, try to track down family members so they will they will give you uh, personal help and that was one of my most exciting adventures was going to Salt Lake City to the family history library out there uh, which is just an extraordinary resource uh, so yeah uh, and then the other uh, I would recommend is especially uh, uh, if you I don't know what ethnicity you identify with but say you know you are have Italian ancestors, you know, there are um, plenty of uh, groups on the internet for whatever ancestry you have. Facebook there's groups or? Book, yeah, there's a master list called Cindy's List. Uh, I think it's C-Y-N-D-I's list, uh, but it's easily Googleable. And it is like a master list of hundreds of organizations and I highly recommend it because you you know it'll it'll break it down ge geographically or ethnically or uh, however you want it. So I recommend uh, checking that out. Amazing, amazing, and um, and yeah, I, I think nowadays with social media and the internet, or as you said, our lives are just so much easier as family historians to find. It's so much easier to find things and and. Um, even though we're more removed from, from these ancestors and um, the communities, I guess, are less insular, we definitely have more resources at our fingertips. Mm. Yeah, and I'm just seeing the last question from AM uh, that uh, she is having trouble tracking her great-great-grandma because of, it's a common name, and she adds, uh, I am African-American. So I, I would recommend 
going on Cindy's list and, and looking for the African American, the Black American uh, uh, groups because they are there. Oh, thank you, Denise. It's Cindy's list. C Y N D I S L I S T dot com. It's Amazing. great resource. Amazing, and there are just so many resources out there. So, so definitely, and don't give up. I think that's a big, a big message, also. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, so we'll choose now one lucky winner to um, to win a My Heritage DNA kit. We're so thrilled uh, to be able to give this away to one lucky um, person in our audience. So um, today's DNA kit is going to go to, um, drum roll please, <laughs> um, June Stearns Butka and June wrote us and she said, I would love to find a cousin that would lead to my great, great grandmother's father's line. Uh, the family story um, was, um, is she was a behind the barn incident. Um, but I guess June <laughs> would like some more information and hopefully a DNA kit uh, will help you, um, you know, find, find some more information about that great, great grandmother. And we hope that that helps. So June will be in touch with you through private message to claim your prize and congratulations. Congratulations. Um, and thank you for adding thank that. Thank you. Phrase to yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, and, my and, pleasure. I you love know, We have a long history with you and my heritage, you know, ha helping you with some of your family history journey. So, so we're so sure, glad to be sure. able to reconnect. And Esther has been super helpful at the Global Family Reunion. You got the word out there, and I am so grateful that you did that and also had me on. So, thank you, Esther. They are lucky to have you at my heritage. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, cousin. Great to meet all of you. Okay, have a great day, everyone. Thank you for joining today. Bye. Bye-bye.